sponsored by Sega. And then if you keep watching, uh, you can actually gain access to the open dev uh, for free as part of a drop. Mm -hmm. And then yes, there's other uh, there's other people as well you can watch. So yeah, I'm not gonna claim this. What I think I might do is I think I will link this to our city, but also I'm gonna generate some units and try to clear this out. I don't know what's involved in that. I think we can just basically do like the ransack once we get closer. So let's head in that direction. No, I'll just power. Yes, okay, so there we get our unique unit. We got population gain, lovely. All right, this place, we've got the outpost created. It's going to take a little while to construct. And then at that point, we should be able to upgrade it into a city. And then this city will have access to copper, which I'm quite keen on. We're going to ransack this animal sanctuary because we're bad, bad, bad people. This city, it's idle. So we've created our new district over here. Food is still plentiful. We've got the extra production, which is great. Horse ranch. I mean, that gives us access to horsey units, but part of me is wondering about generating military units. What is interesting is these military units do actually bring down our population. We only have the one unit of population here, so I don't think generating military units immediately is what we want. It's Games Together username Quill18 for referrals username. Oh, it, I didn't realize it asked for a referral. Yes, my uh, Games Together username is Quill18, so you can put me in as a referral there. So I guess we should build some other things. I don't know about another district. We might want to go and plop down some of these bad boys over here. Um, just to get some baseline boosts. I mean, animal barns, and we're going to have food. We'll keep that going. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and put down the horse ranch now. I think, yes, your scouts can join cities to boost the population. I think that was a thing, if I remember the previous open dev correctly. I suppose we should research bronze working, so we'll be able to exploit that bronze. Any benefit to not ransacking the sanctuary? Um, I don't know. It's possible you get more resources. Um. Okay, dude. Hang on a sec. Follow what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up to the hill. Oh, we got our first narrative event. And I'm going to go ahead and engage here. And, again, I'm just going to make sure that my units... I think we're going to go first because we're going to be the attackers. I don't know. Let me pull back this way. I could just wait. Yeah, I don't think I want to give up the high ground. why mammoths with extinct will kill them all? Well, I mean, it is arguable that mammoths are extinct because humans did hunt them all. Uh, okay, move down here. And then you can finish them off this way. Excellent. Maybe it's other megafauna. Maybe it's not so much the mammoths. All right. We've got our first narrative event coming up. Your people will rely on you to make an important choice. The significant event just happened. What shall be your decision? Empire Find Ocean. By what right do we rule? So, new civics are being unlocked. Founding myths and legitimacy. So, we get to enact these civics. I love this screen. I think it's really cool looking. I love the idea of laws. It brings me back to... It's almost like Civ 4 days I'm thinking of. You know? Like... I really like the idea of sort of choosing between slightly conflicting uh, choices. So founding myths by what right to rule? Natural right. We claim inherent dominion over the land and beasts or divine mandate. Our supremacy is ordained for we are the chosen ones. So there's all sorts of little balance meters over here. Plus five influence on main plaza, plus five faith on holy sites. What do we feel like? Ooh, lots, lots of people for divine mandate. Yeah, some people calling for natural. Natural, right? 
But I mean, I don't know, I kind of like the idea that like God wills it, wills it over here for us. Now, plus 10% science on city outpost, plus two influence on territory. So this is pushing a little bit more. Natural right pushes more towards a sciencey kind of vibe. I think is what's happening over here. I think, um, it, I, I'm not sure, but I think the sort of purple square is effectively where we are, but anywhere in this chunk has this benefit. So I think if the purple square increased to the right three more ticks, I think it would be about the same, but four more ticks would unlock the next level, which is pure sciency. Science is good, but you know, I kind of like the idea that God chose us. Really, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, some of the issues uh, it happening in the, in the boys. For those of you who've seen that series. Chat demands natural more. Well, it was, it was divine first, but I think once we saw the science, I think God moved, or I think chat, the gods of chat, I think moved a little bit more towards natural right, which is on the left. I hereby petition Amplitude Studios move natural right to be on the right because it's only natural. No, not really, but all right. Natural right, done. So we've got that. Legitimacy over here, we need some civic points before we can go and tweak some of this as well. So, yeah, show civics. I like that. What is, so, 25 turns. Political stability, we're currently under control. We can see these sliders. Knowledge that we've gained a civic point, and that's good. And we ransacked, and that's good. And someone became Egyptian. That's fine. Okay. Oh, we got... Two more pop-ups over here? Oh no, that's just two this turn. Yeah, okay, but we acknowledge it. Science-wise, that's still working over there, which is good. We haven't, we still haven't officially met someone. Now, is it because these guys have not actually joined, like formed a culture yet? Or do we have to re-meet them maybe to get some information? I think it's because they, these guys, the brown, haven't actually adopted a culture yet. A little bit of automated movement going on over there. And then use units are done from doing the combat, which is groovy. All right, let's end turn. Check in Discord. No more info there. Good. Okay, we're excellent. Do, 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 do. And before they're Egyptians, maybe. Matter diplomacy. As a civilization of similar stature to your own empire, this newcomer is likely to be an ally. Oh, we're finally meeting someone proper. Okay. Um, likely to be an ally or adversary for many centuries, or even millennia to come. They seek the same goal as yourself, to build a legacy that will never be forgotten. This proposal is respects Nubians. your people and mine. Greetings, Sovereign. I ask only that you always be courageous and sincere. I mean, I will sincerely bring courage to kicking your butt, maybe, but we'll see. Um, we are at peace with them. Uh-huh. Archetypes. The, these guys, and I love this. I love the way that you've got these. So the the people you're going to be facing, your AI opponents, have these archetypes. Because remember, in so if you're comparing something like Civ, for example, right, the personality that you're going to be facing against is going to be the personality of just just the nation and the leader. Period. And that's fixed in that game, right? If someone starts as Gandhi, well, then that's it. You're meet Gandhi. You know what you're going to expect for for things. But here's going to be a little bit different because. There's the Nubians. The Nubians are the culture they've chosen, so that's going to impact their um, their bonuses uh, to you know various tech and units and things like this in this era until they become something else. But the personality is really the leader that's been chosen. For example, if you were to play against Quill 18, regardless of what culture Quill 18 has chosen in the game you're playing, Quill 18 is going to have certain personality archetypes uh, in there that's going to affect the way he plays regardless of who who he's leading at this time so um temulin over here is going to be loyal value righteousness fidelity they will never betray their word words they're committed once a plan is established needs to be followed at all costs they're also wary okay and strengths uh plus one warrior strength plus four protector plus four combat strength in combat for units adjacent districts and garrisons on emblematic units emblematic units i'm assuming is their unique units and bias. They value garrisons a lot. Has just promised to improve your relationship. What's your answer? So... Oh, cultural pro proximity. Your empires have few ideological differences, making cooperation smooth and easy. The other side gains more uh, war desire if you break treaties with them, and declaring wars applies severe war desire drain. So we get along. Their war desire is 50 of 100, same as me. 
hesitant. Unsure of your intentions, so reserving judgment for the time. The timing being! Bingo card! Achievement unlocked. Typo found. Uh, relation is deteriorating. Current supremacy, superiority is even. Benefit from our influence over you. Okay. So, what are you actually proposing? <gasps> okay. So, I think... Yes, I think we've got... We're starting at the bottom. I think these are lit because this is what we've got. I think she's proposing that we begin to trade luxuries. And then maybe later on we can upgrade to trading everything. The trade of luxury resources between the empires allowed, but the sale of strategic resources is banned as they could be used for weapons. This seems this seems cool. All right, let's do it. Okay, I my did read that right. It's so my first proposal. time experiencing this screen. Right? Our people will rejoice. Yeah. What did I say? I missed it. I was too busy re reacting to like I successfully navigated a, a new UI. Because the first time in any game you hit a new UI, you're like, okay, how does it actually work? But we we did parse it correctly, which is great to see. No one, none of us have any era stars. Um, what is the? Oh, that's fame. I want to live forever. Yeah, see, uh, nation number eight has zero fame. They haven't adopted anything. They they still need their one star to advance the next era. Hmm 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 hmm. So we will get some. Uh, so we get some fame. Oh, militarist cultures. So we are a militarist culture, so we're going to earn more fame from militarist stars. I see. Our era goal is to get seven stars, although there's 21 to get all together. Um, these deeds, is this the one? See, some people are completing these, right? So someone was the first to discover the Great Barrier Reef, not us. In fact, we know who it was. It was the Nubians. Someone discovered Vini Kunka. We don't know who they are. We haven't met them yet. But there's a bunch of these deeds we can do, which will give us some extra fame. So that's why they've, they're sitting at 70 fame, is because they got an extra 50 boost from here, 50 boost from here, wonderful world. Um, presumably someone got It's great. Hmm. doesn't have a little dot to be filled in by a nation, but it's grayed out as if someone else had done it already. Maybe it was done before people adopted um, nations. Maybe that's what's going on there. I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. So we're just going to keep playing sort of as is right now, but... Okay, so we can get a military star by having six military units. And then I'm betting we can get another military star by having more military units, or maybe by, you know, starting to kick butt or something like that. What was that? Hold on. Competitive Spirit Era Star. This catch-up category will passively grant you era stars until you unlock the next era. So triggered once another empire reaches the next era. Ah, era stars will unlock faster as more empires. So if people get ahead of us, if they enter the next era, enter two uh, era two over here. I guess we start at era zero. It's like clearly made by programmers, right? Um, if they enter that, we'll eventually get an extra star to help us catch up a little bit. Okay, that's cool. I guess we can go back to the Neolithic period over here. Or maybe one... Oh, that's us. Brutal upbringing. And I think we get to keep that. We are shaped by the total cultures that we have adopted over time, as, as, as I understand it. So, yeah, can I, can I take one scout and add it back to the city? And even if I can, do I want to? I could attack her over here. Oh, it's destroy. Destroy total. Oh. I don't know, it's probably a good idea to not insta-declare war on the first person we meet. Yeah, here we go. Standard pacifism, right? Yeah. Let's go and, uh, let's just go and try to boop some more, uh, wild, wild animals. Right. For now. Plus, we can use the extra exploration. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, these guys here, these, this is the tribe, they're still nomadic. We have no diplomatic relationship with them in any way whatsoever. Nothing to worry about. We can probably start booping them. I was kind of curious about, should I move around first? I'm worried we're going to be fighting uphill a lot, but we have a pretty good numerical advantage. So yeah, let's hunt down these, these nomads where they are. Oh, they just chose to run. Okay. So this is the thing I should have done with the bear. When you get attacked, you can run. If you get attacked a second time the same turn, though, you can't run a second time. 
But we can also work towards raising this, which is going to be fine. <laughs> Quill needs to convince the devs to give the, his AI the passive trait, including quotation marks. <laughs> ah. What does link games together on Twitch mean? So if you make a games together account, um, in your account settings, you can um, you can link to Twitch and to Steam, um, and then. Uh, what happens is then the the people at Amplitude, the, well, the computers there, will know what your Steam account is, and they will be they will know that you're watching a humankind stream, and then they will give you unlocks. So you'll be able to unlock me, and if you watch enough, you'll be able to unlock the open dev as well. Cannot be done as you have to declare war. You don't have enough war desire for that. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of war desire. I'm just saying. Hmm. Okay, we're sitting this. What do we have? We have 70. Okay. Now, one thing I don't know. If I link this... Yeah, that's city creation, which is not what I want. If I link this here, it cost me 25 to do. Is there any reason... Requires an administrator of that city, but our capital automatically has one. Cities administered. I'm going to go ahead and link this. I'm not going to attack you, although I really, really am kind of itching a little bit. If I go too long without attacking anyone, I, uh, I start to get a little antsy. So, but I can't do diplomacy. With these guys, can I? Because they're not showing up over here. Maybe it's to prevent, you know what? That's actually going to be something really good. If that's the case, if it prevents the AI from being able to insta-war you when you're still, you know, don't have a proper city down, that actually will be good. I guess we can go and hunt this, um, I don't know if that's a, an elk. Can I click on this? Deer. Yeah, we'll go and attack the deer. No mercy. Oh, not deployment zone. We'll move here for adjacency. And then the deer moved somewhere, probably over here in the fog. There we are. So I'll just move so we have the adjacency bonus. We're not going to have high ground, but we get the plus one from friendly unit. I mean, if we can kill mammoths, this should be fine. And does that, in fact, count? Because we did have two of six um, units killed. I'm assuming this counts as another. Yeah, three of six. Okay, good. So we can, uh, we can get a bunch of fame and some score by continuing to hunt down this way, which is going to be okay. All right. We've completed the construction of our horse ranch. We're now at 3 of 13 population, which is nice. I think I'm going to build a couple of military units. I'll build uh, one from a, from a cow. From a choy. Um, oh, that's the bio, yeah. Um, and then I will queue up an archer. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to be happy with that. Ooh, air star unlocked. For why? Oh, obtain seven technology. Oh, okay. I think uh, four technologies gave us a star. We will get another star when we get the seven technologies. Excellent. Are there any historical art in the game? The Mycenaeans were creating really great art. Were they? I actually know very little about this culture. I've optimized my historical knowledge over, uh, you know, around, like, say, Europe in 1444, and clearly I'm going to have to expand a few more things. Um, I guess I'm going to keep these scouts together. I was going to think about spreading them out so that we could explore a little faster, but I really want to be able to keep booping critters that I find, and that will be harder if I split things up. I don't know, maybe... 
Oh, can you not come down the hill here? Well, then never mind. It's moot for now. Oh, I didn't. Well, I guess it's fine. I might just remerge these for now. Another sanctuary here. We can clear for some instant cash, which is nice. We could claim another territory, and I kind of feel like I might want to do that. Maybe for a future city. Oh, we need 60. Oh, the cost goes up. That makes sense. All right, what do we want to research next? I mean, we have access to horses. Scout, ride, scout riders are very fast for exploring, which is nice. On the other hand, calendar is cheap because it's quite, you know, early on. And we might just want to go and finish off some early tech. So the calendar leads to irrigation, which does sound pretty valuable, and writing, which gives us another civic point so we can pass another law. Ooh, that's fairly tempting. Or we can lock the ability to build a harbor so we can start working some the seas. Do we need something special to activate the saffron? That's actually a good question. I don't think so. Arts 10 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, how gorgeous is this? I love this. And I think, um, yeah, so there's the background is is this image. So whenever we unlock... Oh! Oh, one mouse over it shows us what the art will fully look like. God, that is really nice art. Tell you what, we'll just grab Calendar because, you know, it's the oldest, it's the cheapest, it'll it'll go fairly quickly. Oh, we need writing for the saffron. Well then, perfect. What's, what, hold on, what's that? Do we? Well, I guess we'll see. Search, oh yes, we could search for the saffron. So we can't declare war on them right now. Fine, I guess. Yes, sir. All right, we have enough influence. There is a city over there. We should go and meet these guys. Do we have a good place for an outpost? People saying don't build them in the edge of district, but I guess we could do that pretty easily. Um, more food, much more production. I don't know, I do like the early production. I think I'm going to put an outpost right here. Although it's not going to get a tremendous amount of vision because of the hills, or the mountains. Hey, more population. Calendar has been researched. Oh, we got some critters we can go and hunt over here. Now, you, do, like, you don't want to necessarily do what I'm doing here and just vaguely right-click on the target to attack because you can choose your starting tile to start the attack from, which will change your deployment zone. We can see what our deployment zone will be here. This seems fine to me. I'll take the two high ground. The uh, This guy might move away again, but that's going to be okay. And deployment? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy over here. I'm not going to attack with him right away, because he's going to be attacking from the low ground. But I want to move him first so that we get the adjacency bonus. So I'll soften him up this way, and we should be able to finish him off over here just fine. Beauteous. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could auto-resolve, but, you know, I'm worried. Like, what if we auto-resolve and it, you know, kills one of our units by RNG? Although I could probably, I could probably deploy, do the initial deployment, and then just the uh, the automated combat after that. And I like like games that do that. You know, I don't trust the games where it just, you know, it just gives you the result right away, and you don't know if it just rolled some dice. But I do like the idea of, all right, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'll let the AI move the units around for me in the interest of speed. And I really like being that, you know, high level emperor as opposed to a general. So I'm I'm usually in favor of that. Okay, calendar finished. I am thinking riding might be good, because we do get that extra civic, which is going to be all right. Fishing might be the other one that's tempting, because we are on the coast. But I think I'm going to go straight into riding. We're going to get some money from ransacking. So I think there's no reason we shouldn't ransack that. This seems pretty easy. 
You auto-resolve and suddenly aware, dear. Now you will know why you fear the night. Oh no! How did Dwarf Fortress infect our humankind? Ransack successful. Another deer over there. Oh dear, oh my. So, actually, that's a pretty good example, I'd say, of the movement. If we go here, our deployment's going to be kind of crummy. But if I attack from here, we should have slightly better deployment options. Well, I like how there's little bridges over here, over the river. All together. So, what we'll do is we'll confirm the battle. I'll move to here. I'll end deployment. And then I'll just turn on automatic battles now. Love it. All right, you were built. I think you're going to hang out over here for now. Um, skip sentry. I think we're just going to sentry you. We'll, we'll build that. that archer. 